Hello fellow traders, tis I the Rumpled One, coming to you Friday, November the 10th, the year's 2023. Let's talk trading. Weekly wrap up. These videos are for educational purposes, only your results may differ from mine. So, we are uh, done with the first full week of trading in the month of November. So, just a friendly reminder about risk management. Never lose more on any one single trade than you are willing to lose. Taking a look at the weekly, we've got one pair that has not filled the gap. The New Zealand Swiss franc. Looking at the pound, you can see this week we're 147 pips below the weekly open. 210 off the high, 31 off the low. If we zoom out to the monthly, however, we're 72 pips above the open, 210 off the high, and 122 off the low. And we happen to be in the upper wick zone of the month. And you can see here in the week, we're in the body of the previous week's candle. <clears throat> if we come out here and look at the daily, we can see we dropped out of the opening range of the week on Tuesday and have not looked back. We're still above the opening range for the month and the opening range for the year. Speaking of the year, we are 127 pips above the open, 926 off the high, and 413 above the low. And for the inside bar traders, notice, um, let's see. Well, See, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, we actually broke out of the uh, that monthly inside bar from nine months ago. But as you can see here, we fell back and now we're 185 pips below the high of that inside bar. So once again, horizontal lines can be very profitable. Right now on Friday, we had red news, but you wouldn't know it considering we don't have any pairs over 100 pips in range. I guess they're all uh, must be looking at a holiday because we've got Veterans Day tomorrow. I, I guess maybe they're taking the Friday off or the Monday off, but uh, obviously we have not much range at all. Whoops, what the heck happened there? So looking at the buy zone, we just crisscrossed across that daily open. And once again, with this small range, there were not too many pips to be had. And we just opened this hour about seven minutes ago at 16. You can see we're just kind of waffling right around here. We touched the sell zone. Now we're moving back up. And you can see here, even, you could, even if you trade at the rat zone, but the range really isn't large enough. I mean, there's only about a 10 pip difference between the lower and upper rat zone. But once again, you could be playing for those pips. I, I wouldn't be taking these trades based on the rat zone, not when the range is so low. I just don't. And then we had Bambino Flex Indicator telling us to look for shorts. Uh, price near the S1 was a long, and you can see here, we just about touched that S1 and it bounced right off it. And near PP, the pivot point, which we haven't been there. So we did get inside that central pivot range. And let's see, we missed the daily pivot. We took out the weekly pivot. And we've taken out the monthly pivot. So this year we have one missed pivot here at 28.77. And looking at H4, you can see we missed a pivot down here at 09, 2209, another one at 2134. And we missed a pivot above 
So chances are might take a couple of days to get to this pivot. I've been noticing that on H4. It'll miss a pivot, then it'll go up here, have a day or two, and then it'll come back and collect that pivot. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. So you can see here, I think we took out this pivot, this missed pivot yesterday at 22.05. And really, this big bar, as you know, we call that a return bar. I'm just kicking myself. Why wasn't I short at 2400 or 2350? And just ride that. But uh, the thing is, I shouldn't kick myself because you guys know and you traders know I um, I'm a short term trader. I'm definitely not a swing trader long term. If I'm in a trade, you know, over five minutes, that's because probably I'm in drawdown, not in profit. So just from how I like to trade, trade those little moves. You can see here lower wick zone from yesterday we're in there and we all know price doesn't like staying in the wick zone so chances are it's either going above 21 or below 11.9 you can see it almost touched it 12.1 for the weekly on the ranges we got 241 this week 75 percentile over the last 12 weeks See, we broke out of the high by 39 pips. We have not broken out of the low. High minus the close. Right now, 215. Close minus low, 27 on the week for the weekly rats. And for the weekly um, crossover, 62 pips high minus open for those going long. And for those going short, 179 open minus low. So, there's a nice move to the downside. And it looks like this weekly is going, candle's going to be a sucker bar. And what do I mean by that? You have a higher high, higher low, but the candle is bearish. The close is below the open. So, that's a sucker bar. And what do you know about, what do I know about sucker bars? It's that I don't know. I have no clue which way price is going to go based on what I see. You've got mixed signals, indecision. So, danger, Will Robinson, danger. Looking here at the uh, simple price action. Here you can see we hit the 2200, the double O there. And we went back up to the 25. So, it's basically been channeling between the 2200 and the 25 so between those two psychologicals and one thing i'm really looking at these psychologicals thinking you know if it hits 2200 then it's either going up to 2225 or down to 2175 and just trying to gauge um what is more likely to happen and it's really kind of hard to say because anything can happen. So that's why you have to trade what you see. So if you see price moving up, and go long. If you see price moving down, go short. And looking at the uh, higher low, lower high here, we had a, a uh, higher low. Price dropped down. There were some pips to be had. And I'm trying to see, uh, looks like we had a lower high right here. And you can see here there was pips to be made on a few occasions. And, you know, if you're wondering, these three balls, you can see here we're drawing horizontal lines from the three balls. So you can get an idea where price has basically turned and so right here you can see we had this s3 that was just four points below the previous s3 and then price came down and tested it 
that could have been a good indication to, you know, maybe do a fib retrace trade, you know, looking to get to at least a 50% level, but it went on from there. Well, actually, though, between here and here, the 50% level would probably have been somewhere right around 2205-ish. But then price continued up because now it's drawing the fibs between this three ball and this three ball. And you can see we hit, hit a 23 and then a 38% retrace. And sometimes you can really target those numbers if you have what it takes to stay in the trade. And that's, you know, Walmart and I, we talk about it. There's a fine line, I think, between greed and patience sometimes. Sometimes you're patiently waiting, but are you being greedy because you're waiting for more? Or are you really being smart because you're patiently waiting to let price do what price does sometimes? But it's, what's really funny is it's like when you get out, then price seems to go in your direction. But when you stay in, it seems like it reverses on you. Um, and that's usually what we remember. We don't remember the times. Oh, yeah, I stayed in. I stayed in. Because I guess while you're staying in and it keeps going, you're not really thinking about it. But as soon as it reverses, that's what you remember. So I guess maybe you have to say, okay, maybe just mark on the chart. Okay, I decided to stay in, say I decided to stay in right here. And then all of a sudden price, you know, reversed. And then it came down, and then it kept going, now I'm happy. And then all of a sudden, price starts to turn on me. It's like, do I stay in? Because if I, if I do, then I'm going to be really upset. I'm going to be giving back three or four pips. And that's three or four pips. In my mind, I could have had, should have had, would have had, the should have, could have, would have. But that's something, that's why you need a trading plan and money management. Because you know, money management just isn't the risk management. It's also, when do you take profit? And it's being happy taking the profit that you took. And, and that's part of, I guess, not being greedy. Is if you take profit, and no matter what happens next, you don't really second guess it or you don't you don't have a, a, a reaction so if it keeps going in your favor so what you got you got what you wanted you got what you took it's and that's it it's not even be happy it's just that hey you hopefully you followed your plan and if you followed your plan you know that's great and then you just sit back wait for the next trade and you know mighty one Shout out to the mighty one. I don't know if you're still watching the videos or not, M.O. But uh, he would say, like, if you were long right here, he says, if you're not willing to buy right there, then you should get out. I mean, and there's, there's a lot to be said about that. If you're not willing to buy, then get out. Because what's going to happen? If you move your stop up, chances are your stop's going to get hit. So, do you want to move your stop up, or do you want to just take what you can in the moment? It's really something to think about. And for the month, we've already exceeded October's range. We've got 333, and we're only eight days, eight trading days into the month. We still have another, uh, looks like 14, no. Forget Thanksgiving. We got about another 12 good trading days left this month. So it's possible to extend this number. We'll just have to wait and see. As far as the uh, year to date accumulated, we have not added on. So, fellow traders, hope you had a, you're having a profitable November and you have a profitable week and day yeah. and i'm gonna wish you a fun and safe weekend like i always do and when you come back 
to trading. Always remember, never forget, it's not what you trade, it's how you trade it. So 